You're involved with many international organizations now. Can you tell us about some of them and what you're trying to accomplish? Um, I'm involved with, uh, with a lot. Uh, my mom was telling me, where do you find the time to? <laughs> and I was telling her, yeah, I don't sleep much. Maybe that's one of the blessings I have. <laughs> but um, two that I would tell you about is that I, um, I, I, I work a lot with a Human Rights Watch, particularly the Children's Advisory a division committee and they deal with issues of child soldiering and things like that and over the years we've tried to do a lot of things in the United States one of the things we do is really policy we're trying to find ways to craft policy or to change policy to make sure that uh, people who recruit children are either held accountable or to find a way to prevent that from happening so for example in the United States before if somebody who recruited a child soldier or children in war came to the United States, um, they would not, nothing would happen to them because that person would be protected by various um, um, sort of diplomatic rights and things like that. Uh, but if that child who was recruited showed up in the United States, they actually could be put in prison. Uh, because if they showed up, for example, at JFK or LAX and says, oh, I'm escaping the war, I was a former child soldier, they would immediately take them to prison and most of the time it will be an adult facility and they will be kept there and they will check them whether they are psychologically sound or whatever it was before. They could choose whether they even want to believe their story or to put them in, back in the society and things like that. It gets even worse if you get off the plane and one hour later you are now 18 or over 18, then they actually can put you in prison forever. But the guy who recruits you would come to the US and just walk about and go back. So Human Rights Watch worked to change that law where now it's the other way around. Anybody who recruits a child soldier shows up in the United States, they will be prosecuted under federal law mm -hmm. for doing that. The second part that we tried to do, which didn't really work, was to make it a requirement for the United States that whoever it gives military aid to doesn't use children in war, whether it's a country or a group. That didn't work very well. Uh, nobody wanted to. But what that did get us is that, excuse me, it allowed certain countries who are very close, who didn't want to allow human rights organizations to go in and walk uh, with them, open up their doors because they felt that their military aid would be in jeopardy. We would talk to them about the fact that we've come in here to make sure that we're helping your children. They'd be like, we don't care. But when they realized that they may not get military aid from the United mm -hmm. States, they budged. It's very interesting. So we do this kind of stuff. Uh, with the United Nations, particularly with UNICEF, uh, I do work with children in armed conflicts uh, section and also with uh, UNICEF. What we do, also that policy work, in addition, we go on the ground. Um, besides trying to strengthen international legal standards, I go on the ground to all countries in the world, from Colombia, Sri Lanka, Central African Republic, Congo, wherever there has been a use, sometimes even in favelas in, in Brazil. Uh, we go to places where people are carrying weapons and children are still carrying weapons and try to negotiate the release of those children from the fighting groups. Of recent, I was mostly in Central African Republic, which some of you may have heard of, that's sort of in shambles right now. So that's the work that I do. It's very <coughs> dangerous work. Uh, there's no protection because the UN doesn't really have any army. Or its own. It has an army, but it's a very weak army. It's terrible. You can't rely on them to protect you. They will, they will, not, they will not do it. <laughs> so we pretty much go and try to uh, negotiate with people we really don't like, but we cannot show that we don't like them. <laughs> and we have to develop a relationship with them for the benefit of the children. And so, yeah, nah, so in short, that's some of the things that I do. I have my own foundation and what else? Yeah, right, let's leave it at that, I think. <laughs> okay. As a follow-up question to that, you have questions about Coney 2012 and other programs mm -hmm. you aren't sure are making a difference with child soldiers and child slaves around the world. Uh, what is something we can do to make a real difference for the kids our age around the world who are now soldiers and slaves? Well, uh, one of the things for me you know, I've been on the other side and I'm now on the other side of it. You know, I'm, I'm, I've been on both sides of wanting to do good in the world and when people do good in the world, the impact that it has on you coming from the receiving end of it. So what I always want to do people, with people is that I want people to be really invested in what they're doing, to not just be passive uh, 
do good as you know to say that oh yeah i donated ten dollars to the red cross i saved the world now so i should rest i don't like that you know For, i want you to be visiting knowing where is your ten dollars going to go because i think it's it's as important to be knowledgeable about the change that you want to make in the world because then actually you can find out what exactly you can do to have a better impact so i can tell you oh do this and do that but you, you may have a skill set you may have an idea, you may have certain things you want to contribute, but if you don't learn about the situation, you're not going to be able to do what needs to be done or to understand it. So hence I was very, uh, I didn't like only 2012 because it was a very sensational uh, sort of thing, like buy a t-shirt and change the world. Hang Coney's picture on your and uh, First of all, that wasn't going to change anything, you know? And secondly, you know, Nobody really thought about, you know, if, you, if in the morning you hang all these conies and try to make Kony popular, you wear his t-shirt, are you thinking about people who had escaped that war from Uganda who may be staying in the United States who are trying to forget that moment? And all of a sudden they see a bunch of people wearing conies. You're going to re-traumatize these people again. So for me, it's that care to really pay attention to other people's humanity, to think about them as you would yourself and find out what it is that you can do. A few years ago, I was at, one example I'll give you, I was at Heritage High in Colorado, which is a school in Colorado, in Denver. And they asked me the same question. I said to them, well, you guys really learn about issues and see what you want to do. So they did. And they realized that, you know what, what we can do is find a sister a school in Sierra Leone or any other country and become a sister school to them. And, do, and sponsor them, maybe go there. And so they did on their own without me saying it. So they went to Sierra Leone. Some of their parents went with them. They built a school. That school became an extension of their school in Denver. And some of the kids go there sometimes in the summer and take classes and everything. I didn't tell them to do that. So now they know Sierra Leone. They know what they're doing. They know exactly the impact. And they've also gotten to meet people and learn from them on the other end. So it means more to them than just, you understand? Yeah. And they did things that I could have never even imagined telling them to do. but. So that's always my advice to you. Uh, learn about the world more. Learn about an issue and involve yourself in it as deeply as possible. Thank yeah. you.